Welcome to our cast iron cooking video. We did a poll on our community page asking folks what they wanted to learn from us, what kind of informational video we could create for you. And the winner was cast iron cooking. We are not fanatics of any kind. We're just ordinary people. This is real life. We're going to show you our cast iron supply, how we take care of it and how we cook in it. There's a table of contents down below so you can find your way around. Enjoy. I prefer cast iron to um, just about any other pan. If you maintain it well, it's a great non-stick surface without um, the degrading, nasty chemical qualities of like a non-stick pan. That coating on a non-stick pan is going to come apart. It just will. It's not made to last forever and ever. The non-stick coating on cast iron um, it, you can maintain it, you can change it, you can improve it, you can completely strip it and replace it, um, and you're not uh, eating those chemicals. It's all just uh, done with food oils. I find that when people ask me how I replace various modern conveniences or electricity-driven conveniences in the kitchen, the answer to most of those questions is cast iron. We don't use a microwave because we reheat in our cast iron pans. We can melt our butter in a cast iron pan. We don't use a toaster because we can toast in a cast iron pan. We don't even use um, an electrical kind of uh, crock pot because we can keep things warm in our Dutch oven. So if you are into homesteading, tiny living, um, off-grid living or self-sufficiency you and you aren't already cooking with cast iron, you might want to look into it. Here's our main dish cooking demonstration. We're going to be making some shepherd's pie in cast iron. We love cast iron for being able to do those one dish meals. You can do a part of it on the stove top and then the other part of it in the oven, or of course it's also good for one or the other. But the shepherd's pie recipe is going to be stove top and then oven. We'll put the whole recipe down in the description, so click see more down below and you'll find the details. But this is a good example of a one dish that I would cook for dinner in our cast iron pans almost all the time. So there's some kind of a fat that goes in, uh, usually butter, there's something aromatic which goes in, usually onions. I cook that up a little bit so that it won't be crunchy later and then I add a meat cook the meat completely, and then at that point I'm going to add thickeners, spices, and whatever needs to happen to turn it into a sauce. Usually I add some liquid and something to be a thickening agent, and at this point I'm getting all my flavors going. And then the last thing you add is anything that you really didn't want cooked, which in this case is the peas salt and pepper at the end so that you know what that salt and pepper is really going to do to the flavor. You certainly can also add salt and pepper at the beginning, but then you, you don't have as much control over the final taste. In this case, it's actually going in the broiler. It, rather than having that cook-through experience, it's really just searing the top. And isn't it true to real life, I actually scraped the top slightly, so you know this isn't Martha Stewart's kitchen. If you talk to a number of cooks about how to care for your cast iron, you may get as many systems of caring for it as you have cooks in the room. And some people do get rather intense about their particular method. What I'm here to tell you is that a number of different things work. The cast iron is very resilient and it is intended to last well. Um, so you have to practice that same thing that it happens so often in the homesteading world of being able to observe and react, try something, see if it works, 
and make it work for you. Nick's going to show you how we take care of ours. So when we say seasoning, it's the layer of polymerized oil that stays on the pan. In order to keep that, that layer, that seasoning nice, you want to keep it away from things that will do away with oil, like soap or hot water or acidic foods or really high heat. Um, all of those things can destroy that seasoning. The seasoning is what makes the cast iron pan a nonstick pan because it has a living coat of oil on it all the time. Now it doesn't want to be greasy, it doesn't want to be liquid oil, it wants to be polymerized oil that has been brought to the smoke point. So uh, I just scrambled some eggs in here and uh, the seasoning on it is in pretty good shape so not a whole lot stuck but there's a little bit that just hangs on afterwards. Uh, this is my number one kitchen tool, believe it or not. You can't buy it in any store. It's a broken spatula, but this is what we use to scrape the cast iron. A lot of people won't use metal. Um, a lot of folks like uh, a plastic scraper, and Lodge does make one specifically for cleaning cast iron. Uh, but I find that if you are gentle, uh, this is really pretty effective at keeping your cast iron nice. I just scrape with kind of a low angle so I don't dig into the seasoning too much. The little rounded corners get right into the corners there. So I sweep all that up, put it in the compost. Just use a single paper towel to wipe out the rest. If the seasoning is getting uh, a little thin or if things are sticking more than I want them to stick, then I'll go ahead and add some oil to it. I don't wipe it down with oil every single time. There's just no need. If you're cooking animal fat, then the animal fat usually, or even vegetable oils and uh, or coconut oil or whatever, will season the pan as you, as you cook. Um, but if it does get a little dry, uh, I use flaxseed oil and there's varying um, you can spend as much as you want on flaxseed oil. Uh, but I just give it the tiniest squirt that I can get out of the bottle. And then I heat it up. And I'll get the pan nice and hot so the oil is thin and it will uh, run well. And then I'll use uh, a paper towel to, uh, to spread it everywhere. So it's just a really thin coat of oil on there. Um, and then I let it heat up a little bit more and actually bring that oil to the smoke point. Um, and then uh, turn off the heat and wipe it down again. Uh, you don't want to leave a lot of oil in there. Here's the little scraper that Lodge sells that would do exactly the same as Nick's broken spatula end. Another category of things that we do in cast iron is baking, things that go directly in the oven. And we bake anything in cast iron. We're not going to do a pie demonstration today, but Nick does crusts around here. He does the pastry and uh, he does them in cast iron. Um, today we have four loaves worth of bread dough here, and we're going to do some in rolls, some in bread, and some in cinnamon rolls, all in cast iron. And we take care of the loaf pan just the way, the same way we take care of any other cast iron pan. Cooking in it with oil is what creates and maintains the seasoning. There's a demo of my bread recipe from when we still lived in the yurt and did all of our cooking on a wood-fired stove. But really, any bread recipe that you like as bread, 
can be also turned into rolls or into cinnamon rolls. It's a good fit for off-grid living. Cast iron is appropriate for cooking right on top of an open flame. In fact, the numbers that designate sizes were originally intended to tell you what size of lid on your stove that would fit with. So you take those little round lids off of your wood stove and you put the pan there and the fire from right below uh, heats up the cast iron pan. Our first two years out here, we cooked entirely on flame and it's certainly possible that we would return to cooking on open fires. So cast iron is an appropriate choice for us. It's also kind of a bridge between that very primitive living that we did when we first moved out to the woods and a, a completely suburban lifestyle. You can know how to cook with cast iron in any kitchen and it will translate into different environments. So that's my number one reason for cooking with cast iron. Another important reason for us is that it saves on dishes. We love to cook, especially in the winter time. The kitchen is a source of joy and comfort for us. Both of us cook. Nick in particular loves to be in the kitchen in the mornings cooking delicious food. We have a small home and a small kitchen and our unfinished kitchen has no sink. We don't even have running water in the kitchen. So how is it possible for two people who love to cook to survive the small uh, unfinished kitchen environment? Well, cast iron is the answer. Cast iron is appropriate on the top of the stove and in the oven and as a serving dish. So oftentimes it's the one, the one dish that we have to clean and it's quite easy to clean. The ingredients get put right in the pan on the stove top and if it needs baked, that, that also happens in the same pan and then we just put that pan on the table uh, and it saves a lot on dishes and water and struggle for us in our unfinished kitchen and our off-grid lifestyle. So this is our cast iron collection that we use here at the house. Uh, as you can see, we have used some recently. This came from my grandmother. She had set aside a box of things that maybe I wanted and uh, she was right. This is actually the only one in this whole lot except for my grandmother's pan that's a that's somewhat antique if you're looking for older pans good health and I guess it's a number nine skillet from good health um, this is a, a really a pretty old pan Esther found it on eBay that's been a, a really awesome pan to learn on um, it's thinner the lodge pans are quite a bit thicker um, but you can really see the results of uh, decisions, whether you get the pan too hot uh, or, or what. The thinner pan is more reactive to the heat. A major difference between getting vintage cast iron pans and getting the lodge pans is the smoothness of the surface. Apparently, it's my understanding that there was a machine finish process that was done in previous decades to smooth the surface of the pan, which is not happening with the lodge pans. When we first started doing the lodge pans, I was biased against them because they, they were knobbly and the seasoning took a long time to develop. Um, I now think I prefer the lodge pans because of the weight of them, but at first it took a long time to build up that seasoning. I, I've heard of people using some kind of a sander to do that machine finish process themselves to smooth that surface, but we've found that just cooking in them over time has built the seasoning up for us and has been a great solution. So it took a little bit of patience, maybe a lot of patience, but they definitely have become the pants we love. The nice thing about the, the lodge pants, um, the, the modern ones, they're really thick. So um, they're quite a lot thicker than um, some of the older pans. So that means that they retain heat really well and uh, they also moderate heat really well. 
So by moderate heat, I mean uh, if you're cooking over flame, whether it's um, a wood stove, uh, which is sort of touchy to regulate, or even just a gas flame, um, it will it will disperse that heat well and make it not such an immediate uh, effect in your pan. This one obviously we use for baking some, but that's not its primor primary use. This is also, I believe, a, a lodge cast iron piece. Uh, it's nice and thick on the bottom, and it's really big. This is our toaster. So um, when I need to put, you know, like three pieces of big home bread uh, all on a surface, that's got room for that. This is the loaf pan. This gets <clears throat> into our weekly bread routine. I prefer it to the tin pans. Um, but we just haven't replaced all of our tin pans with cast iron. And this is the Dutch oven. I will use it um, to do roasts and we'll also use it um, for uh, some deep frying uh, when we do, uh, say, french fries or something like that on the stovetop. Um, but the idea behind the Dutch oven is that it has uh, enough mass to it that the whole thing heats up so that um, you're not just getting uh, heat from your heat source from the bottom. You're getting heat from all sides, more like an oven would. Here's Nick cooking eggs in our Lodge cast iron. You'll notice that he's using a metal spatula. I used a wooden spoon to make the dinner. Some people will say that you should never use metal utensils in cast iron. Telling Nick to never do something is ex extremely ineffective. The, the thing you want to do is to avoid scratching it. So taking metal and scratching the surface of your cast iron will make your seasoning have a line through it and will catch food and can lead to your food sticking and burning, uh, re basically ruining that wonderful nonstick surface. So as we always say, observe and react, see what's going on and see what works for you. A third reason that I love cast iron is that it is intended to be permanent. So many things that you can get in stores are, are flimsy or break easily. You have to get a lot of different things to be able to serve different functions. We love cast iron because it's, it's very uh, close to indestructible. It is possible to crack your cast iron, especially if there's a quick temperature change from hot to, to cold. We've never had that happen to us. Uh, it is very easy to ruin the, the seasoning, but the seasoning is completely possible to rebuild and fix again, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So we appreciate cast iron for being something that fits our values of sturdy, wear forever, permanent, not, not something that you use once and throw away. So uh, cast iron is one of those things that can seem kind of trendy or mysterious or like, you can't quite get into it because you don't know anything about it, um, but you're not going to screw it up. It's just one of those things that you have to try and see what works for you. Um, it is not as mysterious uh, as some people make it, and it certainly is not an expert level um, item. So uh, if you want to wash them with soap, you certainly can. I know in a lot of restaurants they, they will. Um, if you want to treat it like your other dishes, you certainly could. Um, we like it for the convenience of not having to wash it with soap and not having to treat it like other dishes, but you can just fold it in with the rest of your stuff and uh, you'll still get a lot of the benefit out of it. So I'm making cinnamon rolls. This is just out of our regular bread dough. Uh, it's not a super sweet recipe. It's not uh, covered in caramel and dripping with sugar, but it's good and sweet. Um, but we know it's our healthy whole wheat bread in the middle of it. Um, cast iron is really awesome for baking. 
Uh, it's generally a non-stick surface, so things are easy to get out of the cast iron, but it also retains heat and moderates heat, so it's a nice uh, even heat for baking. The technique Nick is using here is a strong piece of thread wrapped around and pulled across to cut the rolled up dough into nice little rolls. Many cinnamon roll recipes also have a glaze in the bottom of the pan, but Nick prefers to just uh, make the one glaze and put it over the top. If it sounds like we're recommending a cast iron free for all, that is exactly what we're recommending. There are a few things though that you want to not do. We wouldn't recommend that you store your cast iron with grease on it. Uh, I've heard of some people recommending that before. And if the oil is not polymerized, if it's not hardened, which, which happens when it gets hot, then that oil just gets sticky and can be rancid and cause problems and that's not the way you want to store your cast iron. Even more importantly, you do not want to store it wet. You don't even want to let it sit wet because iron will rust, and although you can clean it up, you don't want to be cleaning that up all the time. So keep your cast iron pans dry. You may also hear the warning that you can't cook acidic things in cast iron, and we have found that to be the case as well. I wouldn't, for example, cook my tomato juice down into pasta sauce in my cast iron because that acid would strip the seasoning completely and could leach iron into the food. A little bit of acid though is okay if, if you're making a sauce for example and it has a little vinegar in it, um, that's, that's fine and it, it, you don't have to say absolutely no acid ever in, in the pan. Um, but that's another thing to watch out for. And this homestead wife gives cast iron a thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>